Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to make you a little demo uh, explaining how I use the filleting function. I'm just going to hide temporarily these cylinders that I've created. So I'm using uh, one of my tutorials that I've done uh, in the past using a screwdriver and I'm going to create grooves on the handle of that screwdriver basically. So this is just a little demo to explain how I use the filleting function. And if you come with some little issues in your, uh, with the variable radius fillet function, uh, how to go around okay, the, that problem. So I'm just going to bring back those cylinders. And I'm going to go here under this icon where it says Boolean Union. I'm going to expand the toolbar. And I'm going to choose the second icon called Boolean Difference. And I'm going to select this handle, right click. And then one by one, I'm going to select these six cylinders and right click a second time. So now it, has, it's, it did uh, the um, Boolean difference, okay? And I need to add uh, some filleting to smooth out the edges, okay? You can see that these are sharp edges. Now you can see here, this edge is very close to this edge. If you start creating a fillet that is very close to another edge, and that fillet is quite big, you're going to create mistakes. You're going to generate mistakes, okay? So make sure that the edges, first of all, are not too close. If, there's that, if they're that close, that means you're going to have to make a very small uh, radii or you can make a, a different size fillet as it goes around, okay? There's that possibility as well. In this case, I'm going to, for example, go under the Boolean icon again, expand the toolbar. And this is the icon I'm going to choose. It's going to, it's called re variable radius fillet. And I'm going to select this edge and this edge. And actually I can select by doing a box selection. I'm going to choose all the edges at the back of my handle. Okay. I'm not going to focus on this and I'm just going to right click. And I have preview equals yes in my options menu. The diameter, uh, the, the, the radius for my fillets is 0 0.02 inch. And I'm just going to right click a second time. And it does a good job in Rhino V6. It's, uh, it's an improvement over Rhino V5. Uh, I don't have any issues doing my fillets. Okay. If I go here and I do it again, let's select just this edge, for example, like this. And I know that this edge is very close to this edge and I right click. You can see that with the radii of 0 0.02, it's quite big. So if I right click, you're going to see that there's a mistake here. Okay. So this, this fillet is way too big. I need to make it much smaller here. Okay. One trick I like to use, okay, is use the pipe function. So let me show you if I type pipe and I select this edge. Well, before I do the pipe function, what I'm going to do, I'm going to extract these curves from that edge. So I'm going to go under the project curves, expand the toolbar, and I'm going to choose a third icon called Duplicate Edge. And I'm going to select one by one my edges like this. And I'm going to make sure that it's going to be a nice close curve. So now I've extracted these edges and I'm just going to click on Join. And if I go in my Properties tab, it says here under Type, it's a closed curve. And that's what I want. If it says an open curve, then you, you need to make sure that it's nice and close, that, it, that it's closed. Okay. So now that I have this curve that is closed, I can type the Pipe function. I'm going to select my rail, so, so my closed curve basically. And now I can choose, for example, if I zoom in here, I can choose a diameter that is much smaller. So th in this case, if I don't know if you can see the dimension here, it, it gives me the radius. So it's going to be like 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 inch. So let's try 0 0.03. I'm just going to click once. So I left click. And now I can travel with the, the, my, my cursor. As you can see, I still have a little cross here. So I can snap to this quad and make it a little bit bigger. So now let's say 0 0.07 like this. Let's go here and make it uh, 0.15, 0 0.015 like that. So you can see that now I'm making it bigger as I progress. And now I can go and 0 0.03, for example. Uh, and this one, I think I did point, I forgot what was the value. So let's say 0.18. Anyways, you get the picture, right? Uh, and then I can make this value a bit smaller here. So I'm really creating variable radius fillets. So now I don't remember the exact radii. It doesn't matter. I just want to show you how I'm going to create 
a fillet that goes all the way around that curve and it's going to vary in size. And I'm just going to right click and you can see that now I've created a pipe of different diameters. And so now if I switch to the ghosted mode by right clicking on the perspective tab and I switch to ghosted as you can see here. So now I can see inside. Now I can use the trim function. So I click on trim, select my pipe, enter and make sure that you can see the inside. So I'm going to choose this poly surface and just trim it off. So you, it's kind of hard for you to see, but if you do it yourselves, you're going to better understand what's going on. Okay. So now I can go switch back to my shaded mode and I can remove this pipe and you've got here your trimmed surfaces. So they're, they've been cut off. So I can select my close curve that I created. I'm just going to hide it. Okay. And whenever you trim, it's a good habit to make sure that your edge are all merged. Sometimes they are split. So I need to merge my edges. So under the analyze direction here, I can expand the toolbar and I'm going to go under show edges. I'm going to expand the toolbar again. And I've got this icon here called merge edges. Okay. So I'm just going to left click on this and I'm going to select the, the edges one by one. So this edge seems to be fine. This one's fine. This one's fine. So you see this one needed to be repaired. I have this little menu showing up, so it's going to repair it. And I'm going to just left click on edge to fix it. I need to do it again. So merge edge and I'm going to select this edge this time. And this one also needed to be repaired. So merge edge, this one, let's do all. Uh, merge edge. Let's try the other edge. That's it. And I think I've done it all. Okay, that's good. So now that I've done that, there are different ways that I can create my radii, uh, my, my, my fillets. Um, what I can do, uh, I'm going to extract an ISO curve. So under project curves, I can extract an ISO curve here. There's my extract ISO curve. And I can travel and I can create a curve along this direction, but that's not what I want. I'm going to bring my cursor where it says in the command line direction equal U and next to it, you've got toggle. So I'm just going to left click on toggle and I'm going to change the direction of my curve that I want to extract, extract from my ISO curve. And I'm just going to snap in quad or in mid so that I can find Actually, let me undo this. Re let's redo it. I need to snap in quad. It's there you go. There, I found it. Okay, so now I found the quad. And I can do the same for this other part. So I'm going to extract an ISO curve on that poly surface. There you go. And there's my curve. Okay, so now I've got this curve and that curve. I can do it under the fillet curve icon here. I have got a tool called adjustable curve blend. So I'm just going to left click on that. I'm going to select this curve and that curve. And I've got the option of tangency at one and two, and I'm going to click OK. And I can do this the same on the other side. So if I do another extract ISO curve and I go like this, but instead of going in this direction, I'm going to select toggle and I'm going to snap in quad or endpoint just to make sure like this. And I do the same, an adjustable blend curve between this edge and that curve, and I'm tangent, tangent. And you can go all the way around like this, so I can select adjustable blend curve, I can select this edge and that curve, and I'm tangent at one and two, and so on. So you can add as many curves as you need, okay? And then I can do a sweep to rails. So if I do a surface sweep to rails, Okay, I'm going to click on chain edges. So chain edges basically is going to select all these edges that are neighboring to one another, which makes basically a chain. So I'm going to click on chain edges and I'm just going to select this edge, this edge, this edge. So make sure you zoom in so that you select everything like that. This edge, there you go. So that's my first rail and then I right click. And then I'm going to select my second rail. So I'm good. it's going to be this edge, this edge, this edge. Okay, it's kind of hard to see because it's red on green, but I've selected all the edges around for my second rail. And then I right click again, and then it says select the cross section curve. So I'm going to select this curve, that curve, that curve, all the curves that I've created to make that section. 
I think I've only created three and I just right click. All right. So now I have the option of doing tangent tangent at A and B, as you can see. All right. And you can play with the different options here. Okay. And I explained this in my tutorials, what they're for. And I need to check on close sweep in my menu to make sure that it goes all the way around. So now I've created a variable fillet of my edges on my screwdriver by using the pipe function and by trimming basically. Okay. So I explained this in my tutorials. I do a lot of exercises and this is a nice way to fix your fillets any way you want, any shape you want, any sizes you want. It's not an issue. Okay. So don't just depend on the variable radius fillet. So I'm just going to click okay on my sweep to rail function and there you have it. And now I can join this poly surface with that poly surface and that surface right click and there you have it. Okay. Okay. And so you can do the same for the other ones. Uh, just one thing, just remember the size of your diameters. If you're doing a symmetrical, uh, on the other side. Okay. Just be a bit careful because I don't remember what I've done in terms of sizing my, uh, my, my pipe. So I end up with this irregular shape, but you get the picture, I hope, and I hope it will prove to be beneficial for you. All right. So take care and thank you for your attention.